Now on Denver 7 News at 4, President Biden delivers his first State of the Union reaction after a congresswoman from Colorado heckles him. We've been dealing with fewer new cars and higher prices for the ones that are available. We look at the signs of this becoming a reality long term. And six months after the Afghanistan evacuation, we're checking in on the refugee families now settling here in the U.S. The struggles they're facing and the moments giving them a glimpse of hope. And a big relief for many of the Marshall Fire victims. Why rebuilding their homes will cost just a little bit less. Thank you for joining us. I'm Jessica Porter. President Biden gave his first State of the Union address last night. In it, he rebuked President, Russian President Putin while praising the Ukrainians' willpower. He also promised families here at home that he'll focus on lowering inflation and moving past the pandemic. Too many families are struggling to keep up with their bills. I get it. That's why my top priority is getting prices under control. But I want you to know we're going to be okay. The president kept his list of goals short, but he did announce that his administration is laying out a new coronavirus plan that includes more free rapid tests for Americans. Colorado Congresswoman Lauren Boebert is making headlines today for what she did during the State of the Union. President Biden was talking about injured Iraq and Afghanistan war veterans, including his late son, Bo. When Boebert interrupted, she blamed Biden for the 13 service members who were killed during the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan. A cancer that would put them in a flag draped coffin. I know. Bobert wore a shawl that read Drill Baby Drill, a statement in support of increased drilling for oil and gas. Denver 7 spoke to Colorado Congressman Jason Crow, a veteran himself, after the speech. He had some harsh words for Representative Bobert. We've known for a very long time that. Uh, uh, Lauren Boebert doesn't know what she's doing during a moment where uh, the president was trying to honor our fallen uh, as the commander in chief, uh, a very somber moment uh, that uh, both Republicans and, and Democrats were recognizing and reflecting on. Uh, she took it upon herself to uh, show politics and try to interrupt the president's speech, uh, which was an entirely inappropriate. Today, we're also hearing from Representative Crow about the situation in Ukraine. He believes that Putin had no idea what he was in for when he invaded the country. I think he miscalculated uh, the um, ability of his military, uh, the capability of his military to conduct a major uh, ground invasion. And we've seen substantial setbacks, uh, military, military setbacks by uh, the Russians, uh, which I can get into in detail. Uh, number two, uh, substantial miscalculation against, uh, about the resistance of the Ukrainians and the level of ferocity and their, their will to fight. President Biden says it appears Russia is intentionally targeting civilians. The administration says it's looking into any violation of international law and will document them. This comes as the White House is also imposing new restrictions and sanctions. ABC's Faith Abube has the latest. Against abstentions. Tonight, Tense moments at a rare emergency meeting of the UN General Assembly as an overwhelming number of member nations denounce Russia for its deadly military attack on Ukraine. Russia's actions go against everything this body stands for. 141 UN member states supporting the resolution condemning Russia and calling on the Kremlin to immediately withdraw its troops from Ukraine. This as Russian forces are said to be escalating their indiscriminate attacks on civilians in Ukraine. West of the nation's capital, video showing rescue workers running into fire and debris, trying to save lives after a Russian cruise missile reportedly blasted a hospital and a residential neighborhood. We're looking very closely at uh, what's happening in Ukraine right now, including what's happening to, uh, to civilians. Uh, we're taking account of it. We're documenting it. The White House today unveiling new sanctions and restrictions on Russia and Belarus, including a ban on the export of Russian oil and gas extraction equipment and refining technology. The Department of Justice also announcing a new task force that will target Russian oligarchs and their assets, many of them already facing tough restrictions from global financial institutions. The FAA also making it clear the U.S. may intercept and detain crews of any Russian aircraft that violate U.S. airspace. President Biden previewing the announcement during Tuesday's State of the Union address. I'm announcing that we will join our allies in closing off American airspace to all Russian flights, further isolating Russia. 
And we now know as Ukrainian forces continue fighting back against the Russian troops, the Kremlin is suffering some significant casualties as well. For the first time, the Russian Defense Ministry says almost 500 of their troops have been killed in Russia's war in Ukraine. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. Across the world, COVID-19 cases are dropping. The World Health Organization reports cases have been consistently down for a month and dropped 16% just last week. Virus-related deaths are also falling. The Western Pacific was the only region where cases went up. The White House unveiled its new strategy today to deal with COVID-19. It focuses on protection and treatment, like ramping up vaccine production and moving toward a one-stop tested to treat system. The strategy also includes preparing for new variants, as well as fighting the virus abroad and avoiding shutdowns. The plan will require new funding from Congress. Louisville city leaders will give Marshall fire victims a break when it comes to rebuilding their homes. The city is now working on an exemption from new environmental building codes after an emotional meeting last night where there was more than two hours of public comment about the issue. But with having to start over without without having that preparation of knowing that we were going to build with a requirement of green builds, it makes it it makes it just harder to even know what you know what we can do moving forward. The city adopted the new energy efficient building codes back in November. Builders have to install things like high efficiency windows, insulation and siding. But residents who lost everything say these additions are just too expensive right now. The Marshall Fire Disaster Recovery Center in Lafayette is closing this Sunday. Anyone who needs help after that can get information online or over the phone. And today is the last day for fire victims to apply for grants. The grants are from FEMA or the Small Business Administration. As of this weekend, around 3,200 people have registered for help from FEMA. The SBA has received more than 1,700 home loan applications and nearly 200 business applications. We have a link to apply on the DenverChannel.com. Denver 7 is committed to helping people impacted by the Marshall Fire. And today we are reaching out to what some are calling the silent victims. Surprise! Yay! Those are actually really exciting. <laughs> Thank you. Our Jacqueline Allen delivered two air purifiers to Sophia Martin and her family today. Her family has been living in a hotel after insurance deemed their house uninhabitable because of smoke damage. They live on the same block as properties that burned and the hurricane force winds blew the toxic debris coating everything. The process to get it cleaned has been expensive and nerve wracking because they have a four year old daughter with asthma and a six month old son. You know, I'm scared that if I don't make the right moves and don't take the right steps, that they're going to have cancer down the road. Now, good news. This family has just been cleared to come back home next week after the walls are sealed. Thanks to generous donations from Denver 7 Gives viewers, we were or we are able to pitch in and give them a peace, give them peace of mind, buying them those two air purifiers. And then when they move back in, we have pledged to replace their couch. That full story tonight on Denver 7 News at 6. There's a push to get people back on track with the only vaccine that can prevent six different types of cancer, and that's the HPV vaccine. If I knew what I knew and we had the tools that we have now, you know, my life would have been so different. Being diagnosed at 25 not only meant that I had to have a radical hysterectomy followed by chemotherapy and radiation, it meant that I lost my fertility. After beating cervical cancer, Tamika Felder founded Survivor. It's a global support community, and she admits at first not wanting to talk about HPV, which led to her cancer. Now she's not only an advocate for vaccination, but was a part of a documentary about young women diagnosed with cervical cancer. What I realized is that my legacy, it's not going to be in the lives that I birth in the, into this world. It's going to be the lives that I save. And if there's just one person that hears this and they go get screened and they vaccinate their children or they share this message with others, 
then that helps me heal. A few years ago, cancers at the base of the throat and tonsil area, or those so-called oral cancers, actually surpassed cervical cancers in terms of the number of cancers caused by HPV. And those cancers predominantly affect men. The St. Jude HPV cancer prevention team is trying to dispel a common myth that this virus only impacts women. One out of every four Americans are infected. The vaccine is recommended for boys and girls by the time they turn 13. But rates of completion are lower than the actual goal. Recent studies show the vaccine is nearly 100% effective at preventing cervical cancer. And because of it being HPV, parents sometimes uh, express concern about the age. This is such a young age at which to vaccinate a child for something that could happen as an adult. All week leading up to Friday, St. Jude is hosting virtual educational seminars. International HPV Awareness Day. You can learn more on their website. The government is now giving all of us more of a say for things like overdraft fees and payday loans. How it's going after lobbyists and giving you a bigger voice. And baseball stadiums across the country will be empty on opening day and possibly even after that. The latest on the MLB lockout next.